Hello, hello. Welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to talk about the three biggest hair struggles I think we all face regardless of hair type in the summertime. It's almost summer here. It feels like summertime in terms of the degrees and temperature, but it's not officially yet summer, but it's around the corner and we should all be prepared and know what to do to combat some of these struggles. So the first biggest struggle that I face is humidity. High levels of humidity causing crazy amounts of frizzy hair, frizzy hair making our hair unmanageable and ruining our styles, the styles that we spend hours on. So some things that I have been doing to combat frizz from humidity is using a heat protectant spray or a spray that is geared towards humidity such as the color wow dream coat supernatural hairspray it leaves my hair sleek and smooth when i'm doing a stretched out style such as straightening my hair when i am outside and i can feel high amounts of humidity or it's raining great product another thing i would say to try out is wearing a hat whenever possible obviously we're gonna have our hair in all sorts of cute hairstyles but if you can wear a hat for me if i'm going outside and i'm just walking around at the park or going for a walk or if i'm just on my way to work and i do not want the humidity in the air to ruin my hair i will put a hat on and then whenever i get to my destination take the hat off, do a little quick refresh of the hair, and I'm good to go. At least there's a barrier between the extra humidity and moisture in the air um, between your hair, and your hair isn't going to instantly absorb all that moisture in the air and then cause frizz. Two other things I would suggest is, regardless of if you are heat styling or doing natural styles, if you are having problems with frizz from humidity, hair serums, hair oils, really lightweight ones that can coat the hair, smooth down the hair shaft. Any hair serum that you already have probably works great. For me, I'm probably gonna use my Cantu Super Shine Pantene one. I have a other one. I will link them here on the screen. Uh, there's also the John Frieda Frizz Ease one i heard that one is excellent as well and the last thing i would suggest is wrapping your hair at night so regardless of what you're doing throughout the day if you're staying inside the house or going out wrap your hair at night in a style that's comfortable but a style that can kind of reset your hair so for me if i'm wearing my hair in a straightened style and i've been outside all day there's lots of frizz i will put my hair serum uh, throughout the lengths of my hair and then wrap my hair up in a bun, a low bun or like a medium height bun and then put a bandana on or a silk or satin scarf or a bonnet, something like that, just to kind of let the hair reset in that state. And then when you wake up in the morning, you take it out, all that frizz is gone. It genuinely does work and it's really great at times at helping to preserve your hairstyles for longer because we can't always have air conditioning running or be going places where there are where there is air conditioning to help with the humidity in the air okay so i have two additional things that i'm clumping into one because of the effects that they cause the first one is sun and uv exposure and the second one is salt and chlorine from water so from going swimming both of these two I feel like are severely overlooked in the summertime regardless of hair type regardless of age a lot of the times we think mm, it's not that big of a deal but these two things can wreak havoc on our hair both of them can lead your hair to feeling dry brittle limp stiff and can destroy a beautiful color job dye job so if you have just colored or dyed your hair the sun can drastically drastically alter the shade of that color. So for me, I personally strategically only dye my hair in the fall winter time because um, I know if I was to do it in the summer and I always dye my hair jet black, within a month it wouldn't look jet black anymore because the sun tends to add a lot of warm brown, red, blonde tones to my hair. Also, the sun and water can exaggerate any existing scalp conditions that you 
have. So if you have problems with dermatitis or just excessively oily scalp or sex excessively dry flaky scalp the sun and water make it 10 times worse especially if you are having your hair in styles where your scalp is constantly exposed such as a style like this last year i experienced a terrible sunburn on my scalp didn't even think it was possible but just from having my scalp exposed and then the salt water and the, the chlorine from the pool making my scalp extra dry and susceptible to being burned and it, the scalp you could look at the color and it looked like a sunburn and the scalp was peeling and flaking off the way your body skin would if it gets burned so that's something to take into consideration that's why it's so important to wear your hats wear your scarves cover up whenever possible if you are going to be out in the sun for extended periods of time. First, we want to enjoy the summer months and the weather and going swimming. Me. So, if possible, I would highly recommend rinsing your hair out um, as soon as you possibly can. If you can't always go shower, like after you're at the pool or beach or whatever, at least using clean water to rinse out that salt or chlorine. Kind of makes me think about how professional swimmers or surfers deal with being out in the water in the sun um, all the time. Like it's part of their profession to be out in those type of conditions for swimming. What do they do? Obviously we may not always want to wear a swimming cap because it's just not the most aesthetically pleasing thing to do, but I'm sure that they have strategies in place to protect their hair. One of the biggest things I can think of is loading your hair up with a leave-in conditioner or some type of super thick, rich, hydrating, nourishing product. A conditioner I think is great for this instant. Put a barrier between the water and or sun and your hair. Thick layers, put your hair in a nice fishtail braid, Dutch braids, French braids, in a bun at least so that the hair is wrapped up and then you're also minimizing the tangles that come along with being out in the water. I mentioned this last year in the video where I did talk about getting the sunburn on my scalp, but I really, really think more hair care companies should formulate hair products with a built-in SPF, just like how we're coming out with more cosmetics um, and skincare products that have built-in SPF, whether it's a simple SPF of 30 even that can do wonders to protect our hair and our scalp it's all the same type of keratin protein material it's all organic and it can all be easily damaged I feel like our hair products should have a priority as well hair care companies I'm putting it out there create a line for people who are always going to be out in the sun or they're always going to be in salt water or chlorine give us a hair care line that can protect our strands of course if anybody knows of a hair brand out there that is known for this or has already created and formulated a hair care product or a line that's great for uv protection for your strands please let us all know in the comment section below. And the third and final thing I'm gonna mention is excessive sweat and oil causing irritation, causing dryness, causing dandruff, and all those things once again ruin our hairstyles. So the first two things that I thought of instantly was dry shampoo. Everybody knows dry shampoo is great. It's not just for one specific type of hair texture. I do think it can work on multiple textures. The only thing that has prevented me currently from using a dry shampoo is I am afraid that uh, the dry shampoo is going to dull the natural shine of my hair or make my hair look gray at the roots and scalp and not as black and shiny as I normally would like it. But dry shampoos are great. Loads of people use them. And dry shampoos work fabulously at prolonging your hairstyles between washes. Also, if you do feel like you are gonna end up shampooing more often during the summertime, which is totally normal, especially because we wanna remove that sweat, and oil and buildup and all of that, try using a super gentle shampoo. 
even something that's formulated for kids or babies. Um, if, if you especially do have um, a lot of irritation in your scalp or <clears throat> using a clarifying shampoo periodically to give your hair an extra deep squeaky clean. So we're going to try dry shampoo. We're going to try baby shampoo or a gentle formulation shampoo. We're going to try a clarifying shampoo. But of course, don't do anything that's going to dry your hair out too much. We want to just work at cleaning the scalp and the roots where we're getting a lot of that excessive sweat, sweat build up without drying out the lengths of our hair and our strands. The second big thing I would suggest uh, when you're dealing with excessive sweat build up um, is not letting conditioner touch your scalp, especially once again, if you have irritated scalp. So for me, back in the day, I never thought of this, but I would just apply conditioner all over and all the way down and all the way down and all the way down. And I never understood why I had such terrible dandruff, especially as a young age. And then I heard only apply conditioner from like your ears down to your ends. And then I would always have too much dryness for like the first three, four inches of my hair. So that doesn't work. So now I just apply like a centimeter down from the scalp and onto the roots and to the lengths of my hair. And that works great for me. Personally, find what works best for you in terms of applying conditioner to your hair. But know that applying a thick, waxy, filmy ingredient to your scalp can cause extra greasiness over time. Or you could also try doing rinses. So like a green tea or a black tea rinse, an apple cider vinegar rinse, things like that to help balance out the pH of your scalp. That's the pH is being thrown off by the excess sweat and the excess oil. So just a nice natural Cool. <laughs> remedy that doesn't have any side effects to the hair and then of course if you don't want to end up doing anything too extra you want to keep things super simple and minimal and you don't want to go to the root of shampooing more often switch from doing your half up half downs your down styles to just more updos so at least your scalp is covered and you're not having to worry about physically seeing the greasiness or the dullness of your scalp and roots. I also think if you are doing more natural styles, you're doing more wet styling, mousse is great at reviving any hairstyle that you currently have going on. If you don't have like high levels of gel that have made your hair super hard and stiff, going the route of using kind of creams and moisturizers uh, kind of just re-wetting your hair, a little spritz of water, and then a little bit of mousse. Both of that combined is great at reactivating the products that's already in your hair um, and can at least help you detangle and smooth through the strands of your hair and the scalp and roots and then make it not look so obvious that you're battling with a greasy scalp. I personally have never used a texture spray texture spray on my hair but if you're having problems with your hair being limp and lifeless and you want to add a little bit of extra volume to your hair texture spray is great and you all know I'm not a huge advocate for actual aerosol hairspray so a texture spray can work wonders and the last thing I would mention is that Brushing and combing your hair excessively can stimulate extra sebum production. And if that's something you want to avoid, then just keep that in mind. But if, of course, you have, you naturally have drier hair and you want to find natural ways of just working with your body's natural sebum and oil levels, brushing and combing your hair a little bit more often is maybe a route for you. That was my little rant on the three slash four biggest hair struggles that we kind of all face more so in the summertime. Frizz, challenges of the sun and UV exposure, salt, water, chlorine, and extra sweaty, oily scalp. Leave a comment below what your biggest hair struggles are in the summertime, how you combat them, or if you're still on the hunt for finding solutions, we all can help each other 
in this beautiful hair community. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.